In today's gardening show, Caroline will show you her bean basket. Let's have a little look at our kitchen garden, see how that's coming on. I will take on the bush of doom and an interesting, cheap and effective way to keep cats off your raised beds. a little look at our kitchen garden see how that's coming on still needs a lot of work but there is progress i've made this wigwam i suppose you call it a wigwam i didn't have proper sticks they're not really tall enough but they'll do and i've used just a little bit of old twig that we were chopping off the other plants i had some wire ties popped them round to make them circular not my finest moment but you have to make do with what you've got at these times so i think it looks quite pretty and when the beans start growing up there it's going to look really nice. Over here, I got these sticks, which are really woefully inadequate for runner beans. They are four foot at the most, maybe five foot, but then again, they're in a raised bed. So about four foot six at the most, I'd say. So they're not really going to be long enough, but I can't get a hold of six foot sticks. So that's all we've got. And then these shorter ones here, I've made this little frame and these are for my dwarf beans. Now, a lot of people just use twigs, bushy twigs, stand them up in amongst the beans, but I thought it would be nice, just because I like the look on the wigwam, to build a little wigwam. I really need to cut these ends off. My compost bin is slowly filling up. I'm putting a mixture of grass cuttings and plants cuttings that I'm taking from around the garden, old bits of cardboard and once a week, we go on a poo hunt, and on the one path that we use to go on our walk every morning, horses go, and they go too. So we pick it up and pop it in the compost heap. There are more bags. Today, Phil's job is to clear out all this pile of twigs and things so that we can get a little bit of access to that bed. Look at my poor strawberry planter. I think it's too late to worry about planting strawberries up in there, so I'll just leave it for this year, or I may put some flowers in. If we look from this side, you can see the huge space that's been created by taking down lots of the bits of tree. Look at that hole there. Well, it turns out it's not a sinkhole, it's where there used to be a tree, and the tree is now rotting away and leaving a big hole behind, so I'm going to have to fill that in at some point. But there's a lot of work to be done under here. We've got these nasty little weeds. We've got lots of ivy that just grows thicker and thicker and slowly encroaches on the lawn. So there's more work to be done. But still, we are again seeing progress. And I can't wait to show you next week how things are going because I'm sure gardens being gardens, more things will have grown, more things will have changed and there'll be things to look at again. Oh, let's have a last look at my tree peony before I pass you back to Phil. Well, as you can see, Caroline has given some of the plants an air cut here. 
creating a little bit more space for me to maneuver but as i showed you i still have a bit of work to do here Ooh. hopefully i will soon have access to beyond the jungle so let's get to it There's a bit more to do yet, but at least we can see the daylight and come back and join me when it's all nice and tidy. But for now, I think I'll go and get a cold drink. Okay, job done. Let's have a look at what it's, the finished job looks like. And boy, was it a job. I get the feeling there was at least two hours work for every year of neglect. Nice posh latch. Look Ooh, what Look a latch. Look at that. Ooh. Simple, but effective. And like this, That's not so not effective. Very <laughs> oh, look at this. We can actually see. Yes. I've got a job to do on that because yes, I need to have access to that fence really. As I say, it's been overgrown for about five years, so I need to get in there and paint it. Yep. Just cut them all down, make a path. I'll leave the bush here because there's birds in there. They, yeah, they like it, but I'll just make a path along the back there. And there it goes up quite high. As you can see, I've got a bit of repair work to do on that. Yep, that needs a bit of work. And as always in the garden, a bit like life. Every single job you do gives you two or three more jobs. <laughs> yes, especially this garden. Look at that gate. That definitely is another job now on my to-do list. So our boundary is where the gate is, but here we've got a vast open field space, which now we can access, which is ideal for us to take a bit of a stroll, because obviously during lockdown, it's good to have exercise, but it's also good to avoid people. And this is the perfect place. Well, better get back inside and carry on with some more work. Over here is my ingenious plan for keeping the cats away from my plants. They keep coming into this raised bed, digging up and doing unimaginable things which is really frustrating and is ruining the plants. So by sticking all these sticks in, they don't like it. They can't get through comfortably, so they tend to go somewhere else. There's nothing in here at the moment, so I've just left that, but over here where I have my lettuce, I've stuck another lot so that the cat can't get through. It's just a deterrent and it seems to do the trick. Hmm, I need to get that weed out, don't I? Well, folks, Someone was asking the other day, have you found a ball yet in the garden? And there we have it, our ball for the garden. Obviously coming over the fence there from the field outside. Somebody doing a bit of golf practice. And there we have our golf ball, complete with a bit of moss. Here you go, I found a ball. I've done it. We've got our fourth bed accessible. Now, ideally, I would like to have pruned that back as with the same severity as I pruned outside, but we have a blackbird nesting up in the top. And we're pretty sure we have. We've seen her flying back and forth. So what I've done is just undercut, left that completely so we can access the bed, but not disturb the wildlife. And then when they've flown in and to the nest is abandoned, we can always cut it back later. Yes, they're very cunning these birds because 
they fly to about 12 different points looking in opposite directions and then suddenly swoop into where the nest is and we've watched and watched for two days and we're 90% sure now that there's a blackbird nesting up in there but we're not going to cut in to find out we don't disturb it or, or panic them so by undercutting we've exposed this and the good news is we mulched this all those years ago so when this comes up that's going to make easier work on the old ground that old carpet there because although there are some weeds and the odd woodlouse or two it's going to be much easier to work with than if it had been exposed so that's good news that is the good news this morning i got a parcel and in that parcel were lots of seeds now thank you to sarah from docking bay 51 i had a few things i really needed and Sarah said she'd send me some and also she sent me some that I didn't mention but are a real bonus and boost to my seed collection. As many of you who buy seeds will have realised, it's not always easy to buy seeds at the moment. The seed companies are really struggling. So let's have a look what we've got. Now the first one is Round Lettuce Attraction and this is a seed tape. Now I don't know if you've seen seed tape before so I'll open this up and show you. It's a very easy way of sowing seeds, especially if you're a bit clumsy or perhaps your eyesight isn't what it used to be. And you get yourself a tape like this. And inside that tape, I don't know if you can see, a lot of well-spaced lettuce seeds. So you just lay this under the ground, slight covering of soil, and you've got yourself a very neat row of lettuce plants. So that's brilliant. We got some peas. Meteor and some sweet peppers. Now these will be interesting. There's no variety written on there. They could be anything. I have no idea. So that'll be real fun to see how they turn out. And we got some leeks. I had no leeks. And Sarah said you can't live in Wales and not have leeks. I couldn't get leek seeds anyway. So now I will have leeks. I don't know what variety these are. I usually grow musselbra. They're a nice good hardy leek. These could be anything. Again, it'll be nice to see what grows. Fennel. I love fennel. I always thought it was a bit of a nasty looking vegetable. Never really appealed to me. I don't know why. And then I tried it roasted. Ooh, that's very nice. So I'm quite looking forward to having some fennel. Large crisp white bulbs with a mild aniseed flavour. Easy to grow, always good, and fast to mature. Excellent source of potassium and vitamin C. Kale. Nero di Toscana. Nero, I think it is. Nutritious baby leaf or winter veg. So we will pick some of this early, but we leave some. And this is really great in the winter when things in the garden are a little bit lean. This will come in very handy. Easy to grow again. Sprouts. Oh, I love sprouts. One of the pleasures of growing sprouts is to pop down the garden Christmas morning to pick the sprouts off your plant to cook them for dinner. I love doing that, so I'm going to thoroughly enjoy growing some sprouts. And these are Evesham Special, large old-fashioned flavour sprouts. Hmm, old-fashioned flavour. Heavy early crops over several months. Courgettes. Now I've got some yellow courgettes. Oops, a bit grubby. But I haven't got green ones, so this is really useful. If you cook yellow courgettes with green courgettes, it just looks so pretty. Makes the food taste nicer somehow. And we've got these. Leek elephant. Now I'm assuming they're big. It says hardy and reliable, long, thick shanks. Now the top of the packet is missing this we can't really see a lot about it but we can't see it has excellent flavour apologies for my grubby nails i've been gardening and finally sorrel red veined now i've never eaten sorrel so i have no idea what it's like but it does look very similar to the things i get in my mixed salad bag sometimes from the supermarket so maybe that's sorrel i'll have to check if so then that's delicious Easy to grow, lovely, with almost lemony sharp flavour. The very attractive leaves can be grown in containers. One or two leaves finely chopped add a zing to salads. Oh, there we go. That will keep us busy. Let's have a look on the back of this seed packet. Let's check you can see. Now, it's not always easy to figure these out. You've got this little key. When it's pink, you sow indoors. When it's blue, you sow outdoors. 
when it's green you plant it out and when it's yellow you'll be harvesting so with these brussels sprouts for example in february and march i could have sown indoors but but i can also sow outdoors in march outdoors in april and i can also any i planted back here plant out in april or may you leave them in they grow they grow and then september october november and december you will be harvesting so let's have a look i'll be planting these in april so let's have a look what's in april blue so outdoors i don't need to start these off indoors so i'll do that and then come september october november december i could get a harvest but a tip is if you planted in february you could well get your harvest in september if like me you're planting in april you're looking at november probably at the earliest but that's fine for me because i want them for christmas day you may have noticed monkey panda has a new seat he came up with the idea all on his own from finds we made while mudlarking so if you get monkey that's the little seat which is the bottom of a terracotta jar and it stood on an old blue vix jar so i think that was very inventive of him to come up with a little seat for the garden so that he can sit and watch me work this is my tray of sweet peppers let's have a look what date we planted this on that's got a bit grubby hasn't it the 3rd of april we planted these it's now the 27th of april i think i'll have to double check that right these half this tray had started to sprout i planted 12 seeds only four came up in the top half so i already planted these out into a little pot with four sections on it because i like to get them out of the seed trays as soon as they are big enough because it's so easy to get something called damping off disease in your seed tray i like them to have their own individual spaces water them from the bottom just gives them that extra bit of protection since i planted those these have come nice and strong so i got another four that i can plant in here now there is a risk that i could damage the roots of this little one it's just poking through here but i don't need that many pepper plants anyway so i'm not worried if that did happen and generally it doesn't so we're going to get these and pop them into their individual little rooms i fill these with some compost very lightly i'm going to use a plant label and gently ease them out now you can lift them by their seed leaves which are these but i like to get a good splodge of roots and soil make a hole in there and then sit them in give them a little bit of a firm and that way then there's not too much root disturbance so we go for this one next you can hear phil in the distance on the phone i don't know who he's talking to i wonder if it's anything exciting or interesting right another hole in there and pick this one up in he goes like that a bit of extra soil and finally nice big hole and let's pick this one up pop him in there surround him and there we have four nicely potted sweet pepper plants right i'm going to firm in around that one and the chances are this one will survive and there are another oh what have we got eight so there are another three seeds in here somewhere that haven't germinated so we leave it as it is and you never know they may pop up right, we give them a little bit of water to settle that soil around the roots not too much we don't want to drown them and from now they get watered from the bottom by putting them in some water until the day that they plant it out into their bigger planters where they will live the rest of their days now the observant among you may have noticed i've got my little helper with me today last time monkey panda was in my soil somebody commented that he's not going to stay clean very long so he had an idea why not utilize some of the things we found while mudlarking so he's decided to put on a pair of blue glass wellies so he looks a little bit like me when i'm mudlarking and he keeps his feet nice and clean i'm sure you'll agree he is very inventive for a panda let's go on a greenhouse 
house tour. These are the sweet peppers that I just transplanted. So I have eight of those growing nicely there. We have some tomato plants here and some runner beans just starting to pop their heads through there. My larkspur are not doing very well at all. I'm so glad I didn't plant them all. They may still come, but they're very slow to get away at the moment. Here we have our lettuce. This one's called let and he is finally starting to look like a lettuce. Let's pick it up and show you. Look at that. That's very much like a lettuce, isn't it? And we've got another two coming behind. This sedum seems to have survived. I don't have much luck transplanting sedum directly into the garden. It tends to shrivel and die. But that one has come nice while it's been put in a pot. And we've got our mixed wildflowers. Let's have a look at this one. Oops, he's a bit wobbly. They're very leggy, but it will be interesting to see how they survive. We still don't know what they are. These here are shop-bought plants. I've got most of them in now, but I still have a few. So I put them in here. I can water them from the bottom. My favourite way of watering them. I've got these marigolds. They are going to go in near the grow bags with my tomatoes because they are very useful for keeping away the white fly. They really don't like them. Oh, there's Monkey. He's popped his wellies on and he's in the water splashing around. Right, our cosmos are coming lovely now. You can see the true leaves in there, all nice and frilly. Lots more wildflower seeds. I think we're getting to the point they're going to have to go into the garden very soon. Another tomato plant. Another tomato plant. My sweet corn is growing. This, I think, give it another week at the most. And this is going to go into the garden and take its chances with the weather. I think we're okay now. If I show you underneath, look at that root system. They're so healthy, but I don't want them to get pot bound in these planters. So they'll be going in the ground, I'd say, no longer than a week. Right, we've got some dwarf beans coming nicely here. Last week, I showed you these squash and they weren't through and I thought maybe I should give up on them. But look, they finally came through. So it'll be interesting to see if they're a stronger plant for having to grow through the adverse conditions of being in a greenhouse rather than a nice heated propagator. More tomato plants, not all potted up. Let's see who this is. Dopey. So there you go, Team Dopey. That's what he's looking like. So very soon he's going to get potted up so I can cover all that stem with soil so that he'll get a better root system. Who have we got here? Bashful. There you go, Team Bashful. That's what Bashful's looking like at the moment. Not as healthy as some of the others, but he's okay. In this tray I have hollyhocks one side and foxgloves the other. I have one hollyhock just coming through. So... Looks like they're going to be fine, slow to start, but it doesn't matter because these are biennials, which means they're going to grow this year, but not flower until next year. So there's no rush. They're just going to build up a stronger and stronger plant through the next 12 months and then burst into colour. Well, that's the theory. We have some more of these little mixed wildflowers, lots of these. And we've got some geraniums I potted up because they were getting quite pot bound in the little containers they came in from the shop and the basil that I used as a donor plant is growing back quite nicely really isn't it so I'm going to get more basil off that one as well as my free plants well hope you've enjoyed our garden show today if you have don't forget share it with all your friends the more the merrier Let's give everybody a chance to see a bit of the outdoors indoors. And of course, give us that thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, then subscribe and you'll get a notification of all the videos we put out, whether they're from the garden, off the river, or our live show on a Saturday night. Well, till the next time, keep busy, stay safe, and have fun. Bye. Bye.